Good morning. Welcome to City Church. We are so glad you're here, and we're going to have a great morning, uh, and then we're, we're going to just engage the presence of the Lord. That's our goal, and that uh, we don't want to just have church in a box. We want to have church in His presence, and so thank you for being here. We're ready to join in. At City Church, we know there are multiple ways of, of forms of worship. There's laying down, and there's laughter, and there's dance, and there's running, and there's being still, there's weeping, and we want to embrace all those forms of worship without taking our eyes off of Jesus, but that we focus on Him in whatever form He calls us to worship in. And so we want to be a place that engages and allows all those expressions as we point to Jesus today. Will you stand with me? We're going to pray, and we're going to watch Jesus do a good work today. We've been on a series about His presence, and I feel like each week... It gets even more tangible, measurable, and, and real to us. Father, thank you for your grace today. Whew, man. Lord, I just right now come before you, and, and we lay down last week. We just lay it down. And we give up any anxiety of tomorrow. That right now, this in this space of time and location, we would be visited by Jesus. Lord, that we would love each other like you love us, that we would serve each other like you serve us, that, that because of your presence, we live, love, and look more like you when we're done here. So let great grace be expressed on this house today. Give dreams and visions and prophetic words and let all the expressions of Holy Spirit be available today. We just pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. The Psalms 150. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Let everything that breathes. All of you are breathing right now. Everyone take a deep breath in. Let it out. Let everything that breathes
Caden. We came to worship him. We came to worship Jesus. This is about him. This is about him. It's not about you. What's your sacrifice this morning? Is it religion or relationship? Did you just come to check out the box? Or did you come to meet with the king? This is about relationship. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. So your worship is for him. It's not for me. It's not for your neighbor. It's for me. For him. Let's sing open. Open up the windows. Let the light in. Open up the windows. Come on.
the, the challenges and the surprises and the unexpected and it still comes at you the relationships the finances and we get in that and we use this word I'm overwhelmed I'm we even say I'm overcome I can't do this man I was I was just reading this week there's a promise here that we we can read over and we miss in the book of Jeremiah God says he says I place the sand as a boundary for the sea a perpetual barrier that it cannot pass though the waves toss they can't prevail though they roar they can't pass over if he can put a limit on the ocean, he's got a stopping point for your challenge. Though it roar, though their waves come, they can't pass the line that he's drawn. We think, we think, I can't take anymore. And he's like, oh, you're almost there. Because his name can't be overcome. And he, he gives us, every time the wave hits the beach, he reminds us, that's as far as it can go. Though it make loud noise, though the wind blow, though it roar at you, though the tumultuousness of life come at you, though the surprises of life, though the suddenlies of life, though the disappointments of life, though the discouragements of life, though the letdowns of life, they can only come so far. I've set a barrier earlier in Jeremiah he says I watch my word so I can see it perform oh come on I watch my word so I can see it perform he watches it in you and I so he can see it perform I just want to pray over you today that whatever storm that you might be in where you're feeling like you're overcome no he can't be overcome whatever challenge that you might have carried in here today you want to quit throwing the towel give up can't take it either need a lot of caffeine or therapy to get through it I just want to pray over you today that if nothing else when you leave here today you'll be reminded that Jesus doesn't forget the barriers that he set in your life for challenges to stop at enemy can get us to focus on what's inferior we stop living like we are superior in him let me pray over you father I thank you right now that you cannot be overcome you cannot be overcome I don't want to just sing a nice song or have a great anthem I want Lord, I want to believe you cannot be overcome. So right now, Father, I just pray everyone within the sound of my voice, whether listening through a stream or right here in this house, that we would trust you. We would know that in our circumstance of life, you've set a barrier. No matter how loud the wind gets, no matter how rough the waves go, no matter the sound of the roar, You've set a barrier, and we can trust you in that. And that is good news, because you cannot be overcome. Please bless the rest of our service. Let everything we do here just point to you. Help us to leave your living, loving, looking more like you. Let everything we do focus on Jesus. I pray in your name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Once again, our band has done an incredible job. Incredible. Incredible job. We are so, so blessed to have our, this team that we have. Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Russ, if you've not met me. <clears throat> if you're a first-time guest with us, we ask that you would either uh, go online and fill out a first-time guest card or grab a card by one of the orange boxes and fill this out. 
four quick questions. It just gives us record of your attendance, and we pray over you each week. We take these very serious, and, and we, we pray each week for you. And so if you would be sure to get, get one of those cards and throw them in one of the orange boxes for us, that would be great. And speaking of the orange boxes, if you'd like to give to City Church financially, you can go to citychurchaz.com, or you can go through Zelle, or you can give the traditional way of writing a check or putting cash in the orange boxes. Next month, uh, we're going to talk about this. How, ma- how many of you, sit, listen to me, we've, we've had quite a year of transition, location, people, life. How many of you were attending, no, how many of you were not attending last February, one year ago, you were not attending City Church? Let me see your hands. I, want, I need to see your hands. Look at the majority of you. That's why every February, Pastor Russ talks on tithing. How many of you that were here remember their messages? You do not. You remember the principle, you don't remember the messages. You don't remember what you had for breakfast yesterday. (sighs) Bacon. (laughs) It's always the right answer. We had bacon. Yeah, it's like a little kid in Sunday school. Jesus. He answered everything. Um, We've been on a journey uh, for his presence. We just want his presence. We want his presence in our life. We want his presence in our church. And, and this, is, this, this month of pursuing his presence is really setting a foundation for our whole year. Everything we do this year will be predicated on is it inviting his presence or does his presence change us? Even next month, talking on giving, we give to manifest his presence. He, not not for any other reason, not for, not for the slot machine, put money in, get a gift out. No, we give because it's his presence. And, 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 and so we're really pursuing that. So I hope if you've been on this journey with us, you're taking the first 15 minutes of your day and just worshiping, just turning on some worship music before you do anything else in your day and just worshiping, just giving him the first 15 minutes, inviting in his presence Inviting in his presence. Let me remind you that that is the only time of your day that you really can control. Once the children get up, it's over. Once you leave your house and go to work, it's over. There's no more. That first 15 minutes is what you can control. And I hope that you're spending it in worship uh, in his presence. And then finally, remember this Wednesday night, Spencer's Place Coffee Shop. Worship and prayer, the last two weeks have been incredible. They have been so good. And uh, I, think, I think we've almost filled every chair that's, that's there. Um, and so let me just remind you, this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, at Spencer's Place Coffee Shop here in Surprise. So I hope you'll, you'll join us. Um, I, I need you to get your Bibles and open them to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 and, and I'm going to go there in a moment, but we're talking about his presence and, and the, the, the importance of it. And, and it's such a huge topic that, that I really feel like I could talk on it for the whole year and never really cover it. Uh, you know, his presence shows up in our trials. Uh, there, there's, I was thinking yesterday, there's, there's a whole sermon series right there. Uh, if you remember uh, the three teenage boys in the book of Daniel that got thrown into the fire... And, and old King Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire and he says, how many did we throw in the fire? And they told we threw in three. And he said, why is there four? And one of them looks like the son of God. Because in our trials, his presence shows up. And it's his presence in our trial that sh- shows others who he is. We don't like to amen that one because that would mean we'd be okay with the trial. We all like a testimony, but not the test. His presence. Uh, let me read a couple of psalms to you just to get us going. Listen to Psalm 1611. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, there's full. There's no other place to be more happy than in his presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. That means there's, there's, you can't get any more joyful 
Nothing in this world is going to give you anything more than what his presence will give you. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Acts 3.20, listen to this. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You want to be refreshed? You want to feel like you just took a spiritual shower? Just get in his presence. Just get in his presence and, and just, just, just let it run over you. There's, there's, there's fullness of joy and there's refreshment <laughs> in his presence. We've got to pursue it. Isaiah 6.1, familiar probably to, to some, but we're going to take a little different angle, different look at Isaiah 6.1. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to see, we're going we're gonna to look at what, what we can see. There's three, there's three views in this, this portion of Scripture. Isaiah 6.1. In the year that King Uzziah died, wow, this is so good. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, and that's, that's plural, there's, there were several angels. Above it stood, stood seraphim, plural. Each one had six wings. With two, he, he covered his face. With, with two, he, he covered his feet. And, and with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. That's, we'll come back to that, the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. Wow. The house was filled with smoke. Let's pray one more time and then, uh, and then see how we can unpack this and really let it uh, be something that we wear Monday through Saturday. Father, I thank you for your grace. I pray that you... Fill this house. Let your train fill this house. The Lord of hosts would come on in. God, that we would today be so deliberate about letting you change us that it would be obvious to those around us. Let everything you do work miracles in our lives. And all City Church said, amen. amen. I'm glad you were so energetic about that. Two of you. Okay. Hey, so we read this, and, and, and it's almost like we don't really get it, because we, we can't measure it. We haven't been in this. There was a time, one time in my life, and, and I wish it would happen again, and I hope that it happens again, that the smoke, it talks about the smoke filled the temple, and if we keep reading, that, 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 that they weren't even able to stand up. The, the, the heaviness of the cloud kept them from standing up. If you've been around me very long, you've heard me talk about my, my trip to Pensacola, Florida during the, the, the Brownsville revival. And I went down there just because I wanted to experience revival. I wanted to see true revival. And I went to Brownsville, and I was there one night, and um, it was an amazing night, and the power of God showed up, and people were getting blessed. And I was with a friend of mine named Bruce, and it, w it was incredible in Pensacola, Florida. And, 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 and that, that first night we were there, I was absolutely stunned with what had happened and the life-changing message and the power of people getting, getting influenced by the king. And so I told my friend Bruce, tomorrow night, I'm going to the altar call. I don't care what it's for. I don't, I don't care what it's for. I don't care if the altar calls to be set free from prostitution. I'm going. I'm going to get some of that. And so the next night we went, and I don't know what the altar call was for. I didn't care what the altar call was for. I just knew I wanted some. And so I went forward for the altar call and, and whatever it was for, and I'm standing there just waiting. I just want more of the Lord. And I have several people from the, from the Brownsville Church staff praying for me. And I finally get this one little old white-haired guy he starts praying for me. And uh, he just barely touches me. And I land flat on my back. And I kind of slide backwards. And my head is under a church pew. And I'm cognitive because I open my eyes and I can see the gum. And I, and I think, I'm, well, I, that's, this is crazy. I'm going to get up. 
There was no, I could not get up. I could not, I could not, I could not lift my head. I couldn't lift my arms. I could not, there was no getting up. And so I just had this conversation with the Lord. I said, all right, look, I am 3,000 miles away from home. My wife isn't waiting for me. My children aren't waiting for me. I'm not moving until you give me a violent touch. Don't pray that. I said, Lord, I want a violent touch before I move. I want to be violently touched by you. And, and I laid there and prayed that for I don't know how long, hours, couldn't get up, until finally I could get up, and they were closing the church, and they wanted people to leave. And the church was a, a church that seated roughly about 3,000 or 3,500, so it was stadium-type seating. And so you had to go up a, a, sli- a, a, a ramp, to get to the back doors. There were three sets of double doors in the back of the auditorium, and you had to go up the ramp. And so I get up from the ground of which I've been laying on, and I get up, and I, go, and I realize my legs weigh like 700 pounds. I can't, I can't walk. And I get to the first row of chairs, and I look, and all the way back is the doors. I'm like, this is gonna take forever. And I would grab a chair, this is, and I would use it and go. And I would grab the back of another chair and go. And that's how I made my way to the back of the church. And as I get to the doorways, the three doorways, I, I begin to, I'm walking out a doorway and there was these two little gray-haired ladies. I don't know their names, but because I was a visiting pastor, I had a big yellow sticker that said Brownsville Visiting Pastor. And I was trying to leave, and these two little gray-haired ladies in the doorway said to each other, Look, Mary Beth, it's a pastor. And these two little prayer warriors laid hands on me and started prophesying and praying for me, and I dropped in a pile. Like, I am sitting in the middle of a doorway of 3,000 people trying to exit. And I look through the legs of people and I can see my buddy Bruce. And my buddy Bruce is looking at me and he's like, what are you doing? And I just said, I don't know. And I'm sitting there and I cannot get up. And suddenly, I am scooped up. I am lifted by this biker. Stereotypical biker. Big old belly. No shirt, just his black vest, black leather vest. No shirt, red, long red hair, long red beard, lot of hair on his belly. Lot of, lot of hair on the belly. And he picks me up and he says, I'll help you, brother. And, and I'm six foot three, a couple hundred pounds, and I'll help you, brother. I'm like, good grief, I'm in, who's got me? And he carries me outside and he puts me down on the grass in front of the church and he says, God bless you. And he walks off. I, I hope in heaven I meet this dude. I don't know who he is, but I think he saved my life. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around, and there's people laying down. There's people laughing. There's people dancing. There's people crying. There's people standing in odd postures. And I'm thinking, this is the day room of an insane asylum. This, what is this? And I look across the parking lot, and I can see the car that Bruce and I had rented. And I needed to get to the car. I just, I just got to get to the car. And so I stand up. And as I stand up, I get surrounded by this cloud. This, 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 this cloud. And at first it kind of scared me. It was like, what? This cloud. And I can't move. But I got to get to the car. So I reached out and I could move the cloud so I would take a step. And then it would come back around. And I took a step. And this is how I'm going across the parking lot, like this. But I'm the only one that can see the cloud. This van pulls up of people. It was called the glory van. They get out, and they start taking pictures. And they're going, look, he's swimming. It's a swimmer. And I'm just thinking, I have just got to get to the car. And I look down, and Bruce who's the associate pastor of the church I'm on staff with, is rolling in the parking lot. I'm like, this is, this is out of control. I can't walk. Bruce is rolling. People are taking pictures. I just want to get to the car. 
and, and, I, and, I'm, and I just finally, I finally get to the car, and I sit in the car, and this cloud is just, it just fills the car. It fills the car. I'm like, oh, man. So we get to the hotel that we're staying in, and we go in, and, and then I just lose it. I just start laughing. I just laugh. I just laugh. And they just laughed. Nothing, no, nothing was said. I just laughed. I, in fact, I called my wife. I called Tracy, and I was going to tell her about the night, but I couldn't. All I could do was laugh, and finally I think she just got disgusted and went, see ya. I just, it was all I could do in this heavy cloud. And we finally fell asleep, and I woke up the next morning, and I thought, I, well, I wonder if that's real. What was that? So we go down to where they had a continental breakfast, and we wanted to quickly get to the church because they had some morning seminars on how to pastor revival. We didn't want to miss those. So we're in the, we're in, we're in the, the, the lobby of the hotel and, and continental breakfast, and it was, you, you, there was two lines on each side of the table, and you would just kind of take your plate and, and get and. And, and we're going down, and there's a little kid on the other side of the table. Little kid, like 10 or 12 or 8, little kid. And he's just staring at me. I've never been intimidated by an 8-year-old kid till then. I'm like, what are you looking at? And he taps his dad. And he goes, Dad, it's the swimmer. <laughs> I lost it. I'm on the ground howling. Well, we didn't know that the whole place was full of people that had been attending the revival. And these two African-American ladies jump up, back in those days, plug in the, the, the DVD, plug in a DVD. Well, it's Brownsville worship. They start dancing in the, in the lobby. People explode in worship and praise. The poor guy behind the counter realizes, I have lost total control of the hotel. I feel like we're in trouble. So I said to my buddy Bruce, we got to get out of here. So we filled our pockets with hard-boiled eggs and bananas because it was free breakfast. <laughs> and we went, we got in line, we got in line for, for, to go to, to the revival services, and we were sitting there, and I was just journaling what had happened the night before. On a side note, my buddy Bruce gets us in trouble, because sitting in line behind us was a couple from Norway. I mean, this was a world revival, world revival for eight years in Brownsville. And behind us in line was a couple from Norway, and this gal from Norway was very, very European, very, like very, like all she had on was a sundress. That's all she had on. And, and, and this is not insulting, I'm just giving you a picture. Her, like, her legs had never seen a razor. She was like very, very and, and with, a, with a heavy accent. And so my buddy Bruce, whenever the Holy Spirit hits him hard, for some reason, his hand shoots out. He just goes, ah! And, and it's just, ah! The Holy Spirit hits him. So we're sitting there, and so Bruce gets out some sun lotion. And he grabs a sun lotion, and he opens it, and he goes, ah! And he squirts it, he squeezes it, and it sprays on this lady who's only in a sundress. And then he reaches out and starts wiping it. I'm like, oh, Bruce, we're going to jail, bro. It's, it's over. It's, it, we are going. You just, you just assaulted a Norwegian lady. But as I'm journaling, the Lord showed me two pieces. One, the prayer for a violent touch is, is super biblical. I didn't know that. When he breathed into Adam, it was a, a violent breath. And when Holy Spirit showed up in Acts 2, it was, it was a violent wind. And when his presence shows up, he wants to do something violent inside of us. Not painful, negative, fearful. But there's just not another word to describe the place that he wants in our life. And then I began to read about the cloud and for those few moments walking across that parking lot, I was, I, was, I was in the Shekinah glory. I was in the cloud. And it's never happened since, and I hope that it happens again. But I can tell you that when his presence is real, you're free. I, you're just, there's, there's, a, there's a full of joy. There's a refreshment in that place. So, what did, what did Isaiah see? 
There's, there's, there's three values that Isaiah, Isaiah saw as, as he wrote this to us. Number one, Isaiah got, Isaiah got to see how big God is. He, he saw how big God is. Uh, it, 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 says, it says that his train filled the temple. Just, just the train of his robe. He's so big. And that word filled is, is, is perpetual. His train filled. It kept filling. There was no end. No matter where I looked, there was more train coming. And it was just the train that filled the temple. Isaiah saw the size of God. It was just his train filling the temple. Now at this time, you gotta understand that King Uzziah, we don't know a lot about King Uzziah. If I was to ask you, tell me about King Uzziah. Some of you might know that he was from 6'1". But I don't know if you really know much history. We know the history of King David. We might know the history of King Saul. We might know the history of Herod. But do we know the history of King Uzziah? Uzziah was, was king for 52 years. And Uzziah restored worship. He restored true worship in, in the temple. And he had so much favor on him that they defeated the Philistines. He was growing in prosperity. His influence was huge. Uzziah had, had there were no enemies that would dare come against him. I'm giving you a quick background on, on who he was. And, and for 52 years, he ran his kingdom this way. And, and, and he had victory in everything he put his hands to. Well, at the same time, there was another king, and he was the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria was doing his best to take over the known world. But he would not challenge Uzziah because he knew there was favor on Uzziah. And so when Uzziah dies, this is a big deal. Because the people are now afraid. The people are now wondering what's going to happen with the king of Assyria. Uzziah was a brilliant man. I'm going to read a little bit of scripture here to show you his intelligence and his, his military expertise. He invented the catapult. We, we never stop and think, gee, where'd that come from? Uzziah invented the catapult. Watch, watch this description on Uzziah. So we get a little background. Second Chronicles 26, 14, it says, Then Uzziah prepared for them, for the entire army, shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. Okay? Slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men to be on the towers of the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So, the fame, so his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped and became strong. This is Uzziah. Brilliant man, brilliant leader. Inventor. Military expert. We're going to have a lot of time to continue reading about him, so I'll summarize that at some point in his life, Uzziah becomes prideful. He starts, he starts putting himself first and, and, and he goes into the temple and he starts doing what only the priests were supposed to do. And he was warned, hey, you can't do that. Only the priests do that. And Uzziah basically says, look, I'm King Uzziah. Bro, I can do whatever I want. And when he said that in the temple, he was struck with leprosy. And he spent the rest of his reign in a leper colony. He was still king but he led from a leper colony. And then he dies. And Uzziah is dead. We read Isaiah says, I looked up when the king small K had died and saw the king large K feeling the temple. He saw God. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Don't get stuck on a political statement. Let me make this statement without you landing on it. I don't care where you stand, Democrat, Republican, Independent, I don't care where you stand. No matter who sits in that Oval Office, they are not our answer. That's the small K, it's the big K. You with me? That's our answer. And we all need the revelation that Isaiah had. We need to see the big K. 
the big king, the one in charge. Listen, one of the ways that we do that, and it's, it's, it's so important that we gather together for worship. It's important that we do this. Those of you that are here, great. Those of you that are online, uh, we love you. In fact, today online, Patrick and Nicole, I told them I'd call them out. Patrick and Nicole, part of our church there in Illinois, taking care of his mother, Jen. Jen, we're praying for you. And I told Patrick I'd call him out. So there you go. Patrick, send me that $10. Okay. <laughs> it's important for us to gather in this community. Now, I'm going to say some things that if you're around me very long, you know, you know my heart is to encourage you and always to build you up, never to... I don't want to ever motivate you, motivate you with guilt or, or fear. <clears throat> one of the saddest thoughts, I believe one of the saddest thoughts that a Christian can have is I can be a few minutes late for church and it doesn't matter. How that is okay blows my mind. If you had that thought towards your job, Friend, if you were as late for your job as many times as you're late for church, it, it, you, it blows my mind that it's okay to miss a little bit of the presence of God. The big K. Because the small K is what keeps us from it. The small K. I could go on, but you already don't like me, so I'll just keep moving forward. I, I, I hear this. No one from here. I, we have an incredible band, but I, I, I hear this. I, I just don't like the music, so I come for the speaker. Bro, you're missing the Savior. if you're coming for the speaker. Well, you're still mad, so we'll move on. It, it, it blows my mind. It really does. Exodus 25, 22. Look at this. And there, where? In the congregation. I will meet with you, and I will speak with you. He wants us to gather. Hebrews 10, 25 not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Here you go. You ready for this question? No, but I'll ask it anyway. Why is church attendance an option? Why is that, an, why is that even optional? This is eternity. This is the King of kings and Lord of lords. This is the answer to all the world's problems. This is what's going to solve every, every sickness, every education, every entertainment, every legal battle. We have the answer. And gathering together is an option? I don't know why my voice did that. Psalms 22, 25. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. Psalms 35, 18. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. We are to gather and praise together. And when, 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 when Isaiah saw the king of kings the seraphim, and all of his train, he realized there needs to be a gathering point right now. You know, listen, when we started this whole COVID thing, we had started an online presence, and I'm grateful for our online presence. My concern is that online presence becomes your permanent presence. Now listen, if you're sick or, or if, if, if there's you know, life, you're, you're out of town, whatever it is, yeah, get online. But if sitting in your front room in your pajamas is your church, it, it, make, it, it blows my mind when people say that, well, no matter where I go, if I'm the church, there I am. No, the church is called out ones, plural, gather together. No matter where you go, he's present, but that ain't the church. 
Okay. Here, listen to me. Listen, listen. You ready for this? No, you're not. But that's okay. If church attendance was not important, why does the devil fight it so much? Because it's in his presence. Now, listen, I, I'm, I understand the whole COVID thing, and I'm sensitive to that, and I get that whole thing. But man, besides COVID or whatever else, if you need healing, get off the couch. Come get prayer. We got rubber gloves. We'll wear them. Amen, Pastor Russ, you're preaching so good. So number one, Isaiah saw how big God was. Number two, what, what, what's, what's the value we see in there? Is we see how small we are. Listen, not insignificant, not inconsequential. That's, that's not the point. We just realize how small we are. It, 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 too late, I sent some pictures to our team to try to get into the slides today, and, and, I, and I sent them too late. But I, I, I encourage you, go, go Google pale blue planet. And it's the last picture that the Hubble telescope took as it was leaving our atmosphere, or, or leaving our, our universe, our galaxy. There it is. As it was leaving our galaxy, they told Hubble to turn around and take a picture of Earth. And there's, it's a little, tiny, bitty, weeny, blue dot that if you don't look well, you won't see it. And we run around like we're king of the universe. Isaiah 6, 5. Listen, we read this. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips, for my, my eyes have seen the king. Watch this. The Lord of hosts. That's, that's, a, that's a military position. That's a military word, hosts, the Lord of hosts. What he's saying is, what, he, what, he, what he's saying there is, now I see the real commander in chief. Oh, that's the commander in chief. Now I see it. Yeah, I'm pretty small. Not insignificant. I'm small and he still loves me. The real commander-in-chief revealed himself to me. When we see God, we see our sin. And that's not to put guilt on us or to make us feel condemned. That's a good thing. We need to know. We need to know that there's sin. We need to know that there's sin. Okay, you don't believe me. So let me tell you a story about your pastor sinning. <laughs> Somebody just went, oh no. <laughs> uh, what did he do? I've debated telling the story because I don't want to make you think less of me, but I don't know if you can. So listen. On Wednesday night, on, <laughs> my wife is like, oh dear Jesus. Yeah, this might be a good time for someone to invite me to lunch because I'm going to be alone. <laughs> so on Wednesday nights, we have our worship night, and, and I walk from our house to the worship night. It's a little over four miles, and I just take that time to pray. I, I, it, it's about an hour and 10 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes, and I just walk from our house to Spencer's place, and I just use that time to pray, just to pray and get ready for the night, just a night of worship and praise. And so it's just me alone praying and, and just walking and praying and walking, and, and I came to this intersection, and, and I'm, I'm, I jog a lot, and so I'm really sensitive to not pulling into the crosswalk, not blocking crosswalks. I really try to be aware of that and not do that. And so I'm walking along, and I'm just praying, and I have my earbuds in, and, and uh, this, this truck is blocking the entire crosswalk as I'm walking, like this dude is blocking the whole crosswalk. And so, uh, so I'm walking, and I, and I do this, and then I walk in front of his truck, and I do this, 
And then I get past his truck and I do this. So I hear, you guys, I hear F you. And I think, no, F you. I didn't say it. But then I heard the Lord say, how holy are you? How holy are you? And so I said to the Lord, more holy than that guy. <laughs> Me and the Lord had a little talk. <clears throat> Do you know that when he asks you a question, he's not interested in the answer? <laughs> he knows. But there's a, there was a piece of pride in me that I'd have never seen if God didn't love me enough in his greatness and in my smallness. There was a piece of pride in me that I didn't know existed until that momentary encounter. And if I don't spend time with him, I'm not going to hear his voice bring that correction to my life. And I need his voice to bring that correction to my life because he loves me, not because he wants me to feel guilty. I hope that story doesn't make you think less of me. I did have to admit that I took my phone out and had it on video in case the guy stopped and wanted to go at it. Like, oh, oh. And then I, was, I had all these things I was going to say to him. Go ahead. <sighs> Revelation 4.8 says, The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Notice they don't say loving, loving, loving. Graceful, graceful, graceful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. No, holy, holy, holy. So let me take you back. Holy in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, it, it is, is that, that word is, is, is purge, and it's used 102 times in the Old Testament. That word purge actually means atonement. If you think about the word atonement, it's at one. It's when I become one. The word meant is, 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 a, is a state of being. Atonement, at one state of being. I'm, in, I'm at one with him. He purges me and I'm atoned. I'm walking in atonement. Same with content meant. It's a state of being. I'm, I'm content meant. Atone meant. I walk at one. That's my state of being. It, it, it's a purging. David says in Psalms 22, but thou art holy, O Lord. You inhabit the praise of Israel. Can you believe that? Can you think about that? Can you think about that? <laughs> he is holy, set apart, completely pure, and he inhabits yours and my praise. We aren't holy, we aren't set apart without him. He inhabits our praise, holy. This is, why we're, we, this is why I want you to be there Wednesday nights. This is why I want you to take 15 minutes of your day. So we have, we have this holy. And, and, and the more we get to know him, the more we realize how good he is. I have a friend, he's a youth pastor in Seattle. <clears throat> and he, he's no longer, but he was a youth pastor in Seattle. And, and he worked in the, in the core, the, 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 the hardest kind of kids in Seattle. And, and their Thursday night youth group was simply called Thursday night. And he had a few hundred kids would come to Thursday night. One kid he had come to Thursday night would, would, was dealing heroin. 
And, but he was his number one evangelist. Like this kid would invite other kids to come to Thursday night. So m- my friend, the youth pastor, had to talk to this kid and say, hey, listen, you can't sell on Thursday night. Bro, you can't sell heroin at, uh, at Thursday night. <laughs> and the kid goes, but I tithe. And he's like, no, you, you, know, you don't understand. You can't do that. It's the kind of kid that he worked with. Well, th- this young man brought a young lady with him, and she, she was just barely 17 or 18 years old, but she'd been on the streets since she was 12 or 13, and she'd been prostituted and, and rejected by her parents and, and lived on the streets of Seattle and, and, and addicted to drugs. And, 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 and so she got invited to Thursday night and got a radical touch from Jesus and got her set free. And over the course of the next few months, got her some housing and got her healed and got her restored. And, and she was just becoming the, the, that beautiful woman of God she was destined to be. And so one night at Thursday night, they were just gonna have a worship night, just, just worship. And so they all show up and, and, and my buddy is standing in the back and he's looking at all the young people and he's listening to the worship and he sees this young lady that, that has been walking with the Lord for the last few months and, and, and he's just looking at her, admiring that's what's happening with her and she has her eyes closed and, and her hands out and, and tears are coming down her face. Tears are coming down her face and she's just standing there and he's looking at her and he's admiring her and while he's admiring her, she's standing there and pretty soon she starts screaming, F the devil! F the devil! And he's like, oh, snap! I gotta take her out! And God said to him, don't you touch her. That's her purest form of worship. She's just now realizing what the enemy has done to her. And that's the only way she knows how to express it. Because when we recognize how big he is, we see how small we are, and he still loves us. So, so, so Isaiah saw, he saw, he saw how big God was and he saw how small we were and then, and then number three, number three, he saw how good, how good God is. Isaiah 6.6, 6, then, then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Listen to this next line and may this be the greatest news we've ever heard. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Is there a greater line in the Bible? Is there more promise in the Bible? Is there more hope in the Bible than that line right there? Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Somewhere in his presence, somewhere in our worship, somewhere there's a transition, somewhere he takes that. And so the, the Bible says that he throws our sins, our sins as far as the east is from the west. And that's such an important statement. It's, we, we hear that and we don't really think about it. It's so important that we understand what he means by he throws them as far as the east is from the west. If we took a globe and we started at the North Pole and we began to head south, once we got to a certain point going south, we would begin going north. When you go around the globe and you head east, you will never, ever, ever go west. And he says, I cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. That is good news. That is great news. Great news. And the beauty is he doesn't say, listen, this is important. He doesn't say, I forget your sins. Oh, some of you that's like, oh, that's bad news. No, that's good news. Listen, he doesn't forget. If he's all-knowing, how can he forget anything? And if he's going to forget your sin, don't you think there's a few other people he should have forgot? But the biggest problem with thinking that he forgets our sin is it's a direct insult to grace. Because grace says, I know your dirt, and I fully love you anyway. He's so good. He's so good. (laughs) 
Leviticus 17, 11. Abigail, if you'll come up. Leviticus 17, 11 is so important. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement. Remember we talked about that word? At one, there it is, at one meant to make you in a state of being, being atoned. Upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes a state of atonement for your soul. It's only by his blood. Here's the deal. The end of my conversation with God Wednesday night when I was walking went like this. I can't help you unless you'll admit you need this help. Back in Missoula, we were pastoring and I had a, a couple that I was doing marriage counseling with and it was just a brawl. It was, it was horrible. I, in most marriage counseling, there's like 80-20 in terms of fault, 70-30. These two were 50-50. They were just both knuckleheads. And one Sunday after church, I, I they, they, out in front of church, they fought all through church. They stood out in front of the church and fought all through church. And as I'm leaving church, they're like, Pastor. And I told them, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And I told them after church, I said, I'm out. I can't help you. Don't call me. You don't want to do anything I've told you to do. You're on your own. Until you admit, I can't help you. And then I heard that from the Lord Wednesday night. Until you admit, I can't help you. Listen to this next statement really close, okay? Listen to this, the whole statement. Sin is not a problem for God. Unrepentance is. want that to be driven home. Sin is not a problem for God. Unrepentance is. And in his presence, the fullness of joy can only be experienced when we admit there's areas I don't have it. ask you to close your eyes and bow your head for just for reasons of privacy and for opportunity. In this moment with your heads down and your eyes closed and if you're part of City Church you need to be praying right now. Perhaps you're in this house and you need his blood. Oh I'm not saying you aren't you don't love Jesus. I'm not saying you're going to hell. I'm saying perhaps there's a place in your life you need his blood to atone you. I needed it Wednesday night. If you're in this house and that's you, I'm, I'm just going to ask, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to close two ways and this is one of them. And then our band is going to sing one more song. If there's a place in your life that you need to surrender to the blood, I'm going to ask you right where you're at just to slip your hand up and say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want to pray over you quickly for everyone in this house 
I want you to put your hand on your heart. As we close, as we turn this over to our worship team for a moment, I'm going to pray over those that raise their hands with your hand on your heart. And as I pray over you, I want you to say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do right now? Father, for those in this house that raise their hands, that have a place in their life that they need to turn over to the blood, that you would show them those three views we had today. You'll show them how big you are. You'll show them how small that that area is and how good you are to wash it in your blood. As they raise their hands of a sign of submission and a sign of surrender. Saying, I need the blood in this part of my life. Right now, show up. Atone that area of their life. And Lord, for those with our hands in our heart, I ask you, Holy Spirit, what are you doing in me right now? Holy Spirit, what are you doing in me? right now.
Consecrated to pursue the presence of my God, that I might make him known to all around me. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy. This is holy. supernatural miracle happened in you this morning when you asked for his blood to put you in that place of at one that position you're leaving here different than when you came in because of his at one meant his position of atoning amen father thank you for a great morning thank you for your grace thank you for your atone of my sin purging me. Thank you that your grace is bigger than my failures. Thank you that we get to leave here today living, loving, looking more like you than when we came in. And Lord, may we walk in victory. Not because of what we've done, but because of who you are. You are the commander in chief and we surrender to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. City Church, God bless you. Have a great week. Hope we see you Wednesday night at Spencer's Place.